Persona 5 is a long-awaited next installment to the Shin Megami Tensei Persona series. Being Persona 4's successor, it's got some shoes to fill. But does it? After completing it, I can tell you that it's almost unfair to compare the two. And I can tell you this now, it's my game of the year, definitely. I thought it was Dark Souls 3, but no. Persona 5 stays true to the core of the series, <clears throat> while changing it up to keep the game fresh and interesting. I'll try to keep this overview spoiler free, but I will be showing bits of gameplay here and there. Hopefully enough for Atlas Japan not to fuck my video in the ass. I imported this game and got a PS4 just to play it, and Bloodborne of course. As far as music and gameplay go, I'm sorry, but there just won't be much of it. They've kept me from... They've kept me from recording anything in this game, pretty much. I mean, they take down videos that people put of Let's Plays, and you can't even record a lot of the scenes on PS4. It will, it will block you from recording. So anyway, how does Persona 5 stack up to Persona 4? Let's see. For each aspect of Persona 5 that I review, I'll also be looking back in retrospect on Persona 4, namely Persona 4 Golden. The first aspect I'd like to look at is the first 10 hours, without any spoilers for either of the games. Persona 4 starts out with a second year student getting out of his hometown and entering a quiet town that's also in Japan. Of course, like most of the Persona games, you meet your friends first and then you find out that the rumor about the Midnight Channel is real, and then, you know, of course, it, it, it starts out, you know, setting setting up the characters, the story, you know, all these people are going to be invested with 50 hours in. I personally think that Persona 4 isn't at its best until about 40 hours in, like I said, when you're invested in everyone and, you know, shit starts going down. The first 10 hours are setup you know prologue 10 hour prologue now persona 5 is a lot like persona 4 if you turned it on its head rather than being a perfect second year in high school you're a second year with a record in this game you're a criminal no other schools in japan will take the main character of this game so he's on thin ice when it comes to the one that you attend the game seems to be more about making evildoers and criminals admit what they did by stealing their hearts and making them have a change of heart, and that's where the tagline comes from. Persona 4 was more about making people accept feelings that they didn't want to acknowledge. Uh, as far as the first few hours of this game go, it's basically a Persona opening. You meet a guy, you meet a girl, you enter the Velvet Room, you go into the Shadow World. In my opinion, though, that's something I think is tradition <laughs> after Persona 3, you know, I wouldn't really, I wouldn't expect that to deviate if they do make another one. Uh, you do go to school, obviously, but the first dungeon is, I think, pretty dark in a different way than Persona 3 was dark. I think it's dark on a real level with what happens. You learn really unfortunate things about your first couple of friends almost immediately, and that's kind of what you bond over, you know, it's, um, basically your misery, um, you know, your main character, you learn later, he, well, you learn in the beginning of the game that he went through something, and it's, you know, it's a pretty big plot point, but, um, traumatic experience that could potentially ruin their lives, you know, and, uh, this time you learn a lot more about the character you control, I know in Persona 4 they didn't really do that too much, even with Golden, they never explained where he lives, even. Uh, in a more sneaky way though, Persona 5 is kind of all about the truth in the end. It, it just doesn't shove it in your face as much as Persona 4 did. While I do like the first 10 hours of both games and the moral behind their message, I think Persona 5 really takes it, the first 10 hours. It uses it to its advantage. It's more modernized, the English voiceover hopefully will be better, and the story really drew me in way faster than Persona 4 did. The characters could be more fleshed out, but trust me, they get better as the story goes on. 
One thing with Persona is that you can always count on the music being good. I mean, why do you think they made a rhythm game of it? Persona 4 goes for a more disco feel. Uh, lots of vocals when you're in battle. There's a lot of guitar. The music for heading around town is always great uh, in every Persona, and this one's no exception. As the season change, the music does too. Even when you come home, depending on who's there, the music might be different as well. The dungeon music always left something to be desired for me because you spend so much you spend so much time there and it's just kind of like a small loop but the battle music's great especially in golden it's a great soundtrack and personally as far as the persona series goes truthfully my favorite is three but persona fours is really good i think of course like all of them it gets grading after you know a couple dozen hours but it fits the game really well Persona 5 takes a different route, obviously. It goes the jazz. Specifically, I keep seeing the words acid jazz pop up. Never heard of that, but for my first time hearing it being in this game, it works. There's some catchy stuff. The art and the music work off of each other really well. I find that it loops a lot. It loops too much. Like, the battle theme is really grating. It's, it's good, but... It seems like it was not made to be a battle theme for how fast it gets old. To me, anyway. The music is high quality. It's mostly all good. Uh, for how much there is to do in the cities, I couldn't believe how short some of the tracks were. Uh, an artist named Lin, I believe, is the singer this time instead of um, Shihoko Harada, which is uh, the lady who did Persona 4s. Uh, of course, it's all composed by... Um, the same person. One thing I really like is that the lyrics are in proper English <laughs> this time around. As you know, the last couple of games with vocals, the English was very, very skewed. Honestly, like I said, I think Persona 3 soundtrack is my favorite in the series, but if I had to pick between 4 and 5, it's got to be 4. Definitely. For me, the music in 4 is just instant classic. It fits the game so well. I will be listening to Last Surprise a lot though, which is Persona 5's battle theme. And I'll come back to the boss the boss soundtrack and the you know the boss themes, but one song, couple songs can't really win over an entire soundtrack, English or not. Persona 4 has one of my favorite soundtracks and 5 just doesn't match up. Either way, they're both works of art by Shoji Miguro, and I'm thankful he was able to work on this game too. That all being said, this section is obviously going to be the most subjective. I, I could see a fan of a different type of music liking Persona 5's music better. But all in all, they're the same level of quality. They're high quality music. As you know, there isn't really much to say here. Persona 4's gameplay is mostly the same as Persona 3's, more or less, with a few differences. You know, the dungeons are just heading up floors, catching shadows via a card system, beating bosses, developing social links. I mean, you know, why change something that worked the first time? I'm not trying to skim over details, but if you're watching this, you've likely at least played Persona 3 or 4. The gameplay's always been solid, but obviously with Persona 5, they didn't want to do the same thing again, you know? I mean, I personally, I think it would still be good. But there's a certain bad taste left from a game piggybacking off the other success. Persona 5 keeps the foundation of everything Persona 3 and 4 had on the table as far as the um, turn-based combat, but basically just wipes everything off the table. Social links, dungeons, check. Everything else, gone. Say goodbye to just going up floors over and over. In this game, you're exploring palaces, heading through vents, jumping from pillar to pillar, and finally going back to catching shadows via a dialogue system instead of playing that damn RNG card game. This was something that was in the earlier games, and of course the Shimigami Tensei games. If you're not a fan of Atlas, you might be interested in knowing that they, com they came up with the formula for Pokemon first, actually, four years before the first Pokemon title. It's a common mistake when people are comparing the Persona and the Shin Megami Tensei games to Pokemon. And of course it's a genius idea, it works perfectly. You interrogate enemies when they're hurt via a holdup, which is basically like an all-out attack from Persona 4. Except in this game, you can choose whether you want to attack or capture. 
I was very surprised at how much platforming there was. And I don't mean, like, Mario platforming. I mean, like, scripted platforming. Kind of like, oh, you're stuck here. You need to find a way to get here from here. Like, it's, it's weird, you know, because usually it's pretty linear. And I don't mind that. It just really surprised me. There's a lot of, like, chandelier jumping, walking on ledges. And in later dungeons, there's puzzles. Like, a lot of puzzles. Not something... Once again, I'm once again something I wouldn't have expected. I also love they explain why you fight so many shadows when you just encounter one. You know, if you've ever played the older games, you find one shadow and it's like five of them. Um, one one of my issues though with this game is it's really easy. Like it's ridiculously. I think I died four or five times. It's a very easy game on normal. Um, they've got this thing called Baton Touch, where if you hit an enemy's weak point, you can give your extra turn to your teammate, and that that makes it really easy. Um, social links not only affect your Persona Fusions, but they also give you an added boost. Like, there's no spoilers, but there is one link that, once you max them out, they'll make it to where you can spend more time, you can spend time with people at nighttime after visiting the dungeon, which has never been a thing. That's always been, you know, you go to a dungeon, you have to rest that night, and you're not going to be able to um, to do anything that night. So there's a there's a new reason to level your social links in this game. Also, once you max them out, uh, it carries over into New Game Plus. Another highlight from Persona 5 I wanted to talk about was the side missions. And uh, once you level up a social link, they'll complain about something. Uh, I know one of them talked about being bullied, and so you have to change the heart of that bully in this side area. And I thought that was a really cool idea. There are a lot of these side missions, and they're they're all optional, of course. Um, but I thought it was a great idea. It kind of it reminds me a lot of Persona 3 because it's the side area is pretty much Tartarus. It's you know you're just going down, down, down. But the palaces, the new dungeons, are actually, um, they're very dynamic. They all look different. They have a different layout, puzzles, platforming, you know, all that. Uh, definitely Persona 5 has better gameplay. I, I think this is going to be, if they do make another Persona, this is going to be the standard they go for, definitely. Because it's, you know, I was just surprised. I was blown away at how, it's a bold move. It's really a bold move. I'm looking forward to seeing what people think of it in America. I won't talk too much about this, but I just had to brag on this game's art style. Persona 5 wins <laughs> over any of them. This game's art style, I love it. I love the perfect amount of cell shading that's right in between, like, Catherine and Wind Waker, where the edges are cell shaded and the rest is just, you know, a unique style. If you like the game Catherine, like I said, you'll love how this game looks. That was also made by Atlas. And no matter how this game's received in the West, I know the, this art just has to be loved worldwide. I, I mean, it's a beautiful game. And it's so nice to see one of these games finally premiering on a console again. The last Persona, the original Persona 4, was on the PS2, and that was seven or eight years ago. So it's been a long time. Uh, long story short, though, you don't need to worry about the art. <laughs> You'll get to see some of your favorite Personas, including... Izanagi and Thanatos if you buy the DLC I think it is uh, basically remastered all of them though it's my favorite art so far and I I can't wait for the animation if they ever do a full length one you know like an actual full anime Yes, no spoilers here, don't worry. If you haven't played Persona 4, shame. Obviously, if you're interested in Persona 5, you don't need to play any of the rest. But Persona 4's basis is solving murders. The one who's actually the murderer ends up being a real mindfuck. It satisfied me. I liked how the game ended. Maybe a little bit too happy for a Megami Tensei game, but it wasn't too bad to me. Obviously, it wasn't too bad for a lot of people. Now, Persona 5, the last 10 hours in Persona 5 are fucking nuts. That's all That's all I can explain it by, really. It's just a cluster of events, and it, it got me hyped. 
I don't know about anybody else. No, nobody's really reviewing it because they it keeps getting taken down by everyone. But people just talk about it on forums and stuff. In my opinion, around the third dungeon, I was getting a little bit burnt out. But this ending is so strange and so large, just in general. I think it's my favorite one so far in a Persona game. It starts out with a twist that I think I think they wanted you pre to predict this twist, and I personally did. Did a bunch of other twists that you just never saw coming. But the ending does not rip your heart out this time, so there's there's that. I, I definitely can see this game being milked as bad as Persona 4 was. <laughs> but this time I actually do want an anime of Persona 5. Maybe I can do without the dancing game this time, but I would love to see an anime of Persona 5. All in all, I think Persona 5's last 10 hours are some of the best of the entire game. Personally, I... Honestly, I feel like Persona 4 will still be the most liked game as far as reviews go. Because it's really something that's hard to live up to. But Persona 5 is a great game. Uh, it's been eight years since a main series Persona debuted on a PlayStation, and it, it really shows. It looks great, plays great, and the characters take a while to warm up too, but I, I think that works out for the better in the end. Uh, romance the Temperance Arcana, by the way. <laughs> I love the way it looks, plays, and the few shortcomings it has are easy to get over. Uh, I imported it on December 24th and finished it on the 12th of January. Uh, my plan- my planet? My PSN account will be in the description, because I know some people around here are reviewing games and not actually playing them. Yeah, that's a thing. Uh, I imported it because I'm just- I'm so sick of them delaying it, and I thought it was- I thought it was well worth the import. 20 extra bucks was not a big deal to me. Uh, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you guys on this game come April. Maybe I'll come back to this video, tell me what you think of it. Um, also, something to take with a grain of salt is that I had to translate a lot of the dialogue. So, that's, you know, even more points towards Persona 4 when it comes out here. I'll probably like it even more once it comes out here. Anyway, video's gone on long enough. Thanks for watching. Yeah, I'm